Acts chapter 26. We read the same scripture last week. We can take maybe from 13 down to 22. A couple of verses. Alright, so about the past, um, okay, from last week we began to look at the series, mini series, The Force of Obedience. The Force. Obedience is a force. It's a, a powerful, powerful weapon in the kingdom of God. Obedience. And anyone who walks in obedience mobilizes the fullness of the grace of God. So this year we've looked at Walking in his fullness. We have examined grace that comes through knowledge of the Holy One. We've examined grace that comes from the secret place. We've examined grace that comes through humility. I want to round it up with grace that comes from obedience. The force of obedience. Acts 26, we are starting a story midway. It's about a, a, a man called Paul or Saul who had an encounter with God. The Bible says at midday he was journeying and at midday as he was walking along the way, he says, O king, along the road I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things which you have seen and of the things which I would yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith that is in me. Declaring, I declare unto those who were first at Damascus in Jerusalem throughout all Judea, then to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do the works befitting of repentance. For these reasons the Jews seized me in the temple. They tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God, I stand witnessing both to great and small and saying none other things than that which the prophets and Moses said should come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our uncle uh, verse was, as Paul was narrating his journey to somebody called King Agrippa, telling him about his encounter on the road to Damascus and how God had turned his life round about, he emphasized and told the king that I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Last week we established that if anybody would amount to anything in the kingdom of God, he must make sure that he responds in complete obedience to the heavenly vision. Obedience remains the the anchor tool if anybody would become all that God wants him to be. God has a very beautiful plan concerning your life but God is a gentleman. He will not budge into your space until you become malleable in his hand and he can turn you in whichever way he wants and then that which is in the heart, in the mind of God will come to pass. God has a very beautiful end for every one of us. You look at maybe something like glass and you they tell you that glass is made from sand and you wonder how can something beautiful like glass 
come out of sand or maybe white paper and they tell you it's from trees and my little girl will ask daddy are you sure it's from truly a tree because you look at the paper the paper is white it's beautiful and yet they tell you that it's from a tree brown bark with covered with bark and so much shrubs and yet when it goes through the right kind of process something beautiful can come out of that which you and you can never never imagine you would see a man talking about his history he says for this reason I appear to you men will see uh, Saul and think of him as a murderer but in the heavens there was another writing in heaven concerning his life the heavens did not write that concerning him and when he aligned to that pattern one who was described as born out of due time one who was came last among the apostles when he conformed to the will of God at the end of his life they said he has become one of the greatest because he was so malleable in God's hand and God could take such a reject and make something glorious out of their lives and the same plan he has for you and they will see a woman called Rahab a prostitute and they will be passing by her every day and they will think that this one is there is nothing good going to come out of this life but when you check the scrolls of heaven she was not a prostitute she was a progenitor of the son of God the DNA of Jesus was in a harlot who was in a nightclub but when she found her purpose when she found the heavenly vision concerning her life and she began to align to that vision see what God can do with ordinary men a man called David at the backside forgotten by men described just as a serpent boy but when you check the scrolls of heaven when you check the handwriting of God concerning his life he is the king of Israel he is the beloved of God but if God can find a man and he can mold the man and the man will be obedient to the heavenly vision God will bring something great out of his life I remember Jacob was in church every Sunday but he was a swindler and an assassin man until the day he decided to give up his own way give up his own idols and the Bible said you are not just Jacob as a prince thou has wrestled with God and has prevailed this morning I came to remind you God has something big in store for you God has something bigger than you can think or imagine but you must yield to his molding yield to his working don't resist God allow him and you will look back and say is this me I never thought this grace was in my life until I said God have your way until I said God I want to walk your way and then he will make something beautiful and awesome out of your life there's a heavenly vision concerning your life you don't need to look at your earthly resources your earthly connections you only need to find what was written concerning my life Obedience. The reason why God can't work with many because we will not be obedient. Last week we said if anyone would become obedient to the heavenly vision, the first is that you've got to give your life to Jesus. From the very first encounter, Paul began to call him Lord. Then, then he did not need an altar call when he knew that God had a plan for his life. He yielded his life to God there and then. And he began to just submit there and then. And his life was never the same from that moment. From the time that he heard that God had a plan for his life. God had a will for his life. The first that God desires for every one of us is that we will truly give our lives to Christ. The second we mentioned was that he was not ashamed, ashamed of the ways of God and the people of God. He was not ashamed to be part of them who were speaking in tongues. He was not ashamed to be part of those who were holding their Bible to church. He was not ashamed to be numbered among them who were being persecuted. In fact, when he gave his life to Christ, he knew that he was 
signing up for trouble because the Jews were persecuting such. But when he heard that there was a heavenly vision, he quickly identified with these people and see what God could do with his life. He knew that it was a dangerous way, it was a troubled way, but he chose to identify with the people of God. This morning I was attempt to push further. Let's go back to verse 15 and then 16. So I said, this is what we... God began to tell him about what plan that God had for his life. God began to tell him that there was a will that when they were drafting, they did not consult him. They did not ask him. There was something that in the heavens, they had mentioned his name and written down. I want us to look at the same story in Acts chapter 9 and verse 6 and put in a very, very important submission. In this story, as soon as he yielded to God, God said, began to tell him his vision. When you read the account in Acts chapter 9 and verse 6, there is a very important clause put in there. The same story, the same story. And so he, meaning Paul or Saul, trembling and astonished, after he had yielded to God, his first sentence was, Lord, what do you want me to do? It was after he had prayed this that Jesus began to talk to him and say, Arise, go into the city. I want you to be do this and do this and do this and do this. And I want us for a few minutes just to focus on that prayer that Apostle Paul prayed, Lord, What do you want me to do? When he came into the kingdom, his first prayer was, God, what do you want me to do? This must be the prayer of every child of God. It's not very common nowadays. Nowadays, when we come to prayer, we have our our shopping list. But if something nice will come out of your life, this was, must be one of the chiefest prayer topics on your agenda. God, what do you want me to do? This must be a prayer that must occupy your heart. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Right from the beginning, he knew that God had a plan concerning his life. Last week in in the book of Psalm, we said that God has a book. He has written your members in that book. He has written the borders of your habitation in that book. He has written the number of your days in that book. Now, the problem you and I have is that we too must read that book so that we know what is written concerning our lives. If you don't get to read that book and know what is written concerning your life, you will do so many things in life that never really mattered or were important concerning your destiny. There are people that are writing exams and they will write plenty. They'll say it's non-score. But betro, 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 betro. Excellent. If it was that, if that was the question, I excellent. What is a tree? They say, oh, I want to write about a forest. But you must know the question, the writing of God concerning your life. Lest you run a race in vain. And at the end of the day of your life, the Lord is asking you, what did you do with this? And you have no idea because you never knew what God wants you to do with your life. When John the Baptist came on the scene, the people were trying to tell him, John the Baptist, you are this, you are this, you are a great man. John the Baptist was very clear. He was not, he was not in doubt as to what he was called to do. He said, I am just a voice. I am not any other person. I am not Elijah. I am not, I am a voice. 
Jesus came in Hebrews 10 verse 7 he says it is written in the books concern, in the volume of the books it is written concerning me when Jesus first entered the temple he said today this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes God they are talking about me There was no ambiguity about what God has called them to do. And that is why they can say at the end of their lives that I have run a good race, fought a good fight, and I have finished the work that God gave me. That's why Jesus at 33 can be saying it is finished. You'll be feeling sorry for him. But he says, I checked, I checked the book concerning my life. That which was written, I have finished it. the question is what is written in the book concerning your life you are 30 years what is written concerning your life 40 years what is written concerning your life when it's all been said and done what was written what did you do did you follow a heavenly vision Last week we established concerning each one of us very clearly. God has a plan. This must be your life pursuit. What is written? To marry. Give birth to four children. Buy a nice car. And yet we never scratched the surface of what we're called to do. Today, this is for some people. This is an abstract preaching, but in those days, this was this was this was this was Christianity. Today, the child of God is so distant from what God is saying concerning their lives. Very distant. We are not too sure. We are not. It's guesswork. Seeking the will. Those times you will hear, oh, I'm going to seek the will of God concerning school. Then a brother will separate himself, maybe all the Saturday, and will come out with answers. One time, your pastor Jesse was, saw a beautiful damsel. So, saw something beautiful. So I said, okay, I'm, I'm coming. They used to live at, in Cape Coast. I said, I'm coming there to see parents. So when, they, when she called, the first thing says, my father will ask you, what did God say? The first question they will ask you, and to prepare and sawaba. Prepare and sawaba. God will ask you that. When you waited, what did God say? Paul, I had a Paul. If you marry a good person, you have a Paul. So go ahead and sit down and you, you talk nicely. Today's believer, also, even if they come to pastor's office, now pastors, we can't even ask them, what did God say? What, when they come with beloved man of God, you mean bizarre. Because we are totally deviated from following the will and the purpose of God concerning our lives. So, I want to go and stay this place, or we, we, we can't even ask. Then, no, can hear. What did he say? Did he say you are staying in Ghana or you are staying in this place or you are staying or you are just following the wind and the crowd? When I began waiting on the Lord, he gave me a definite scripture. I mean, sometimes I struggle with all the meaning. But 2 Timothy 4, 5, the very first verse I learned when I became serious with God, it came direct. I know that there is a mandate concerning my life. And when I heard that scripture, when I knew that I was called into ministry, my friends changed because I had a focus in life. My, the kind of things I watch on TV, they changed. My passion changed because you know for sure what God has called you to do. Brethren, this is not overly spiritual. This is the way of every believer. That you know the will of God concerning your life and you give yourself in obedience to the heavenly vision. Today in the office, oh, what's up? The Lord said it is brother A, 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Also for any did three months. Even so say, are you sure? I'm talking about somebody. Are you sure? Are you sure it's not because they promised this and this and this? Are you sure? Because I know that in two months time, the same person will come and say, this time the angels, the angels were singing and I had this time. The same person in January it was brother A. When you come back down to April, it has said to another person. By the time it will be August, you hear another name because we are not accurate. We are not walking and hearing the will of God. We are only doing God's work. One of you wait, let some rich guy with six packs come into church today. Or oh, some beamer be our spark down. Man of God, end it two weeks. We can say, oh, so for, no, no, I dreamt yesterday, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. Oh, so for, please, I, the Lord is saying it all. I don't know whether he is actually going out, but the Lord is saying. Because we, we are so much having our own agenda. We are walking in the flesh. We are not giving ourselves to a heavenly vision. We have our own agenda we are following. How can God mold us? Told Isaac, Isaac, sowing in Egypt and sowing in Jerah may look like sowing to you, but in my plan, you must stay in terror. And if you can find obedience and stay where you have been called, I will bless you there. Today, the brothers you are looking at behind. Oh, Christoni. Holy Ghost is in you. You will now separate yourself and ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do? Behind, you are looking at sheep to fulfill your purpose. Sheep. 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 God, have mercy upon this generation. Kind of God, yeah. When you come to church, Christian is looking. Oh, I saw a way AC warm. Fine, fine. Oh, when the, the service is not too long, it's appropriate. It's the kind I like. It's the kind I like. We are only serving ourselves. You only hear something. I'm waiting on the Lord to hear what the Spirit of God will tell me. I am planted here. Even if I, some people, if I call them today and rebuke them in two weeks, they'll say, God has sent me to the next town, the next town, the next town, the next town. Who let me share somebody's story here? So I did it. Just give two weeks. For two weeks, you won't send Pastor Jesse high or anything. Uh, the, the spirit, the spirit. Uh, we, we don't, he says, God made some Enochs. Men made some Enochs. Some men, today we don't even hear it. Also for me, I've crossed, but it's left with the rest of you. But we don't hear, we don't hear that I have a burden. To, we don't hear it. I'm not saying become that way. Because we are following ourselves and our own vision. There's greener pastures here. The believer is going there. There is this here. The believer is going. And we are disjointed from the purpose of God concerning our lives. What is written concerning you? Young person, you have never given yourself to wait. So, as if I prayed for 30 minutes. Sometimes you will pray for 30 minutes. Sometimes you will pray for 5 days. Sometimes you will pray for 6 months. For the thing, you must learn how to wait on God and clearly isolate His will. In major matters of your life, Proverbs 3 verse 6, He says, seek the will of the Lord. Seek it. Seek the will, the mindset. It doesn't matter how far away you may feel from God. In all your ways, I look at the NLT. It puts it the way I want it. Seek what God is saying concerning the major matters of your life. Seek His will in all you do. Seek it. Look for it. I don't know which this generation is very different. You know, he never separates himself. Nothing. It's always, oh, they say, can you be a bioha? They say this place is good, they'll give you money. And you will make shipwreck of your soul. At the end of the day, God was expecting you in um, Achimbo Fufu and you were in Accra. Can, he, can you ask yourself, can he do what he planned with your life? 
six years will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. David even wanted to build a temple for God. Isn't it a good thing? Isn't it a good thing? But the ancients, they knew that we come and ask. We inquire from the Lord. And it's surprising that God will say, this one is not for you. Can you imagine saying, go see ya? To just go and receive lashes. You mess up God's plan. You mess it up. Because we are not given to seeking the will of God concerning our lives. Colossians 1 verse 9. Colossians 1 verse 9. It says, since we heard of your faith in Jesus, Paul speaking to the Colossian church, we don't cease to pray for you and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Maybe amplified. You must be filled, filled, not even um, doubt, filled, filled with the knowledge. Look at the amplifiers that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will, in all spiritual wisdom, with insight into His purposes, and in understanding of spiritual things. This is what the believer should be filled with. Brethren, it's not every open door that is meant for you. See, there's a way it seems right. As you sit there, it's very right. It looks nice. It looks appetizing. Look at this guy with six packs. He has a good job. He has this. He has this. Every door. So for this is what I check. I check the tall. Six pack. Money. This. It looks right onto a man. But the end, the end thereof. Why are we just walking by sight and not seeking His will? If you don't know His will, what are you being obedient to concerning your own personal life? There's one of the greatest servants of God called Pastor Higgin. He pastored a church for nine years. The church did well. I mean, I myself, I read a lot of his books about his church life until I read that God said, I never called you to be a pastor. Church was growing, healing, miracles. He says, I never called you to be a pastor. He said, nine years of your life wasted. Wasted. Seek his will. That's the only way you can abandon yourself to the Lord's purpose for your life. This was the way of the saints. Luke chapter 6 from verse 12 to 13. That's the way Jesus was accurate about it. It wasn't guesswork. He knew what God wants him to do. As the Father is doing, so I am doing. He says, now it came to pass. In those days, Jesus went up into the mountain to pray. He continued all night in prayer to God. Then the next verse, he comes down to choose his disciples. That is how much they sought the will of God. They go up mountains. I mean, I wonder how they'll do all night in mountain. We'll be thinking about the snake. Maybe some, some, something will, will bite you, some scorpion. But they were desperate to find out what is God saying. There was no God there to charge up the atmosphere. But they are climbing up the mountain so they can choose 12 disciples. This is not a marriage partner you will be with for life. But so he can isolate. Even that crowd, there was a devil among the 12 he chose. After, and then you, when you go and choose with your eyes. Seek it. Seek it. 
today, that's not the whole emphasis, but maybe let me just seek that will. One of God, I want to visit a church member and we were talking. We were talking. I think there was music in the background or cast. There was some noise. I can't remember exactly what it was music or cast in the background. And as we were chatting, the, the, the lady said, the baby is crying. Ah, which baby? I mean, I know she has a baby. She has a new baby. The baby is crying. So, it's like, I think she was trying to listen whether the baby has fully woken up or not. So, me too, I did my ear like this. Uh, I didn't hear anything. And she said it again. Oh, he's crying. I'm sure he's woken up. She went into the room and brought a baby. I was asking, uh, how come me, I couldn't hear? Me, I also did like this. Uh, I didn't hear. But the lady said, my baby is crying. Man of God, she didn't go to any school to learn how to hear your baby's voice. She didn't come to church to learn how to uh, know baby is crying. In fact, I tried to hear the baby. I tried. But I couldn't hear the baby. But how come she could hear her baby's voice? How come her baby's voice was so quiet? So in the midst of background noise, the other music or cast or something at the background, while we were, we were even talking and trying to hear ourselves, somebody could pick a signal that my baby is crying. Because maybe she has spent time with the baby. She can pick out the baby's voice in the midst of all the noise. In the midst of all the chaos, she knows the voice of the one she loves. Because she has spent six months with this baby, night and day. She has lived in the presence of that baby. When that baby speaks, she can pick the voice. But today we cannot teach because the believer cannot hear the voice of God. At best, you say, also, you're one hour, God will do his will. Because we are detached. We have given ourselves to hear every other thing. And so the time when the proposal comes, you don't even know the voice of God. You will not hear. You do like Pastor Jesse. And yet God will be speaking so loud and clear. My son, my daughter, this is the way. Walk in it. This is the way. This is what I want you to do. Press in to hear Press in to hear because that voice is the greatest commodity for the believer to hear. Look, 5 verse 1. It says, When all the people were pressing in to hear the word of God, he will seek it. If you will seek him, if you will desire to know what he's saying concerning your life, he says, He will show you. But how much do you want it? So it was the multitude pressed about him. They were pressing to hear. To hear. To hear. That still, small voice. If you want to know God's will, for which you can put all your energies in your life to fulfill, we must seek his face. We must give our attention to asking God, Father, what is your will? No wonder today we don't hear we don't hear anybody saying also from relocating to Ochibon Pistol. So we have been here for a few years. We've never heard not not it hasn't happened. We only hear um, we are going to Saskatchewan, we are going to that's the only one we hear. How come? How come the Holy Ghost is not is not revealing any other? No. We come back to seeking His will. Next week we will preach our Apostle Paul. But as he followed God's will, sometimes it looked it looked like he had even made a mistake. But they followed still. They followed. They followed. Even if I don't develop my second point well, I want to urge believers to coming back 
to seeking God to know his will for your life. He has, he has a mindset. Seek him to know that will. Lest you run somebody's race. You do somebody's life, somebody's course. Which was a macram and I'm a man of A plus. But you never started to pursue the will of God for your life. If you turn aside like Moses did and, and listen, he will direct you into that which he has designed for your life. Just end with the fourth point. And Apostle Paul, the last verse of our text, Acts 26, verse 22. said, having obtained help from God, I continue this day. Uh, look at King James. says, I continue this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than that which the prophets and Moses did say to come. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, and saying none other things than those things which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Since he saw the plan of God for his life, the Apostle Paul gave his entire attention to fulfilling that will, to being obedient to that will. You see, brethren, those of us who have given our lives to Christ, we are on a very, very slippery road. Some of you have left some girlfriends. You've left some nightclub. You have left some chilling. You've given up sleep to follow God. If you don't continue for God to do, you will miss out. You will miss out in all the chilling that you didn't chill. Because God's plan will not eventually come to pass fully in your life. You are, you didn't chill. You two are in the kingdom too. You are mounted to nothing. Because you are wishy washy. But Paul, after 18 years, says, I still continue to this day, not doing anything but being obedient to the purpose that God gave me. If you're not focused on continuing, I shared with us the last time, can you imagine Abraham? Abraham head, go and kill Isaac, your son. Took the son, he was going. If he did not continue to walk with God, that boy would have been killed. And he would have stood in front of God and said, Father, I've killed the boy. But the danger is if you don't continue to even hear the next word, the next instruction. The next directive at that Kairos moment of your life, you must still be in tune to hear the next instruction. That's why David was such a big warrior, a mighty man, fought so many battles. He won each of his battles, conquered, conquered, conquered. But every time David is going to war, he will come back to God and find the will of God. It's not that he doesn't know how to fight, but he knows that he is following one who has the vision. Right, the Israelites will meet I, AI, and they are going to war and they would lose because this one we can handle it. This one is small. Every time you come into Christ, you come under the government of the Holy Spirit. He is our greatest asset. Do you treasure his voice? Some of you, even the Holy Ghost is afraid to talk to you because when he talks, the way you will shout at him. When he speaks, my son, do this, the way you will shout, keep quiet. And you come in the night, in the morning, tap you, my daughter, it's time to pray. Then you, in the Holy Ghost, you will just pull the cloth. 
we are not yielded to his government. No wonder he has stopped speaking to a good man. Because even if he says it, even if we seek the will, say, oh, Radi, tell me, oh, tell me. Are you sure if he tells you, with my daughter, as for you, you are going like this. As you sit here, if he tells you, would you do it? Because unfortunately, some of us, it will not be uh, Miami or anything. Or some people will be Afghanistan. Some people say, "Oh, not be Miami." I know, I know. Some people, uh, as I started preaching, they said, "Oh, my own is Miami." But uh, somebody's own will be. Well, will you do it? Will you yield? There is a law. It's called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It is when we yield to the Holy Ghost and make Him our Christian possession. Because I've realized something. He will be mentioning your name, but unless you say, Master, speak, your servant hears, he will not open his mouth. He will be mentioning somewhere, 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 somewhere. Why won't he just go ahead and talk to him? But he needs one who is yielded and say, Master, speak. What you say, Lord, we will do. Where you send, Lord, we will go. Lord, your command is our, our instruction. We will do it to the letter. Romans 12 verse 2 It says then that that is when you can prove What is the perfect will of God concerning your life When there is complete yieldedness And your heart, your mind is in tune with God But alas, some of us We are even here saying that God, what are you saying? But he has been talking He has been talking, 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 talking You have not listened to his voice this is the way to hear the voice of God. This, this one. It is when you are you are familiar with His voice that you can hear the added instruction. When our hearts are not opened, He will not find His will to do it. Spirit, lead me, Lord. Where my trust is without borders. Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever, wherever you call me, Lord. Take me deeper. Than my feet could ever wander, Lord. Lead, Lord, and we will follow. In the presence. Spirit, lead me. Spirit, lead me. Show us the way. Show us the way. Spirit, lead us. Spirit of God, lead us, Lord. Sing one more time softly. Spirit, lead me. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with 
over, Lord Jesus. Take over, Lord. Take over. May we walk, Lord. I am Take us deeper. Take us deeper. And our minds could have got fashioned out, Lord. Take us on a journey, on your adventure. Show us, oh God, what you want to do with our lives. In the name of Jesus. That is our cry, Lord, this morning. We want to come on an adventure with you. Through valleys and mountains. Through dark places and lighted places where we know God that you are with us. Lead us, Lord, lead us to green pastures. Lead us to still waters. For we know that the path you would choose for us will be the very best we will have in this life. Help us, Lord, to yield to that voice. Help us to tend to your every instruction and to fulfill your will on this earth in the name of Jesus. We commit ourselves, Lord, to doing your will. We're seeking your will. That your name will be glorified. In the blessed name of Jesus, I will pray. And all the saints shall shout a big amen.